game against six, so I had to open with the warrior. All right, so um, for Amaz right now, the matchup is pretty good. And also, he got an amazing opening with Cogmaster into oh, Anoyatron. Uh, no fireworks to deal with this Cogmaster, which is going to deal some damage. And then what an elemental uh, for Amaz. This might, this might suggest he's actually playing the Blinktron version. Well, we shall see. It does have the Water Elemental. I don't think he had Blinktron yesterday. I think the Water Elemental was maybe just a... A flavor pick and it does have you know that really high health and the freezing ability um and that freezing could be really really crucial against warrior yeah certainly it's like stopping the weapons we've seen it before um was it versus gara versus gara where the um the snow chugger was really useful um uh, but what's the what's the hand for dale like is it good is it bird it doesn't look that great and there's a slam as well and defender of argus Interesting choice of cards. Yeah, we do see some and Sylvanas coming into hand there. Uh, it does have the Death Spy, but that's not the greatest. It's really hard to see what Dale... Dale doesn't really have any optimal plays here. Um, it's, it's kind of unfortunate. Vargas. Yeah. The you like the... Vargas is interesting. If you buff the, the Armor Smith, kill the Anoyachon, no. you deny the mech and you still have something to stop the attack from the Water Elemental. If World of the Middle attacks into Armorsmith, you're, it's not going to kill it, so it ha it will have to be pinged as well. And uh, you do prefer World of the Middle for a possible death spite next turn. Yeah, I, I, like the I like the Defender of Argus here to clear the Anoyatron. It's a much better way of clearing the Anoyatron than the death spite. It gets another body on board. No, actually, you don't, you don't have to ping because Water Elemental actually kills the Armor Smith. But still, like it, is, it does prepare Water Elemental for Death Spite. On Amaz's side, it's not bad. Like you do want to freeze the Warrior to stop the weapon, so Frostbolt is uh, a pretty good decision. Yeah, it means he can't clear the Water Elemental this turn. That's pretty crucial. Second Armor Smith's pretty good though. So there is no good way to clear this water elemental. Um, you can't play the weapon. I think you just slam and see what you get, but then... What now? Wow, already a tough situation, tough spot for Dale. So the mirror entity, and he has it, he's going to proc the mirror entity with the armor smith. The game, one of the games earlier we talked... Uh, I think it was the yeah it was the phone tap alchemix mage warrior game, where being able to trigger the mirror entity with the smaller minions was absolutely crucial to the warrior being able to to stay in the game. If I'm remembering that right. Yeah, that's definitely very important. Um, if mirror entity is being played where you don't have the small minions, you it's like free mana or even a free spell for savannas or something better. Uh, so here that that was important and uh, we can already see uh, Amaz playing Mirror Entity again because on turn 6 you do um, suspect the Shield Maiden and, you, and you've seen both um, Armor Smiths so there's a good chance that the Warrior doesn't have anything small any, anymore. Oh, there's an Acolyte! Wow, that's uh, a pretty good top deck here. I guess if you're gonna play the Acolyte, you know, arming up's fine, but do you maybe consider slamming your own Acolyte? Well, you will play Dr. Boom next turn. If you feel like you're in a situation that uh, you might actually consider slamming a client, drawing two cards out of it, and um, maybe trying to get a brawl. Because even though you have 27 points of health, so you're more or less uh, stable still, your opponent is going to have free minions, start drawing cards. So this game will be more about card advantage in the end. So the Accolade triggers the Mirror Entity. Very interesting. Oh, he's, yeah, he's actually going to slam a Maz's Accolade. I guess that's okay. He's going to trade one card each, and he's going to probably use his Armorsmith to finish this off. I'm not sure I like that play, but on the other hand, he is... Um, getting rid of the Acolyte, so stopping Amaz from drawing three cards out of it, but he did draw um, two, so basically providing your opponent with two free cards. 
but still, um, yeah, this this puts Dale in a in a bad position because he will only have one more uh, one card from his own acolyte where he could get two. He could actually get three cards out of it. He only goes yeah. one. Yeah, that never feels good, especially when you're the warrior and you're looking for options against this deck. You get another weapon. Those two weapons are just sitting absolutely idle in your hand because this water elemental is freezing you every single turn. Weapons are dead cards for sure. But then again, he can play Dr. Boom right now. Um, he might also think about Sylvanas, but I'm not sure Sylvanas is a good play. Uh, so the reasoning for Sylvanas would be that if um, Mage is able to deal with Dr. Boom and the bombs, your board is uh, getting cleared. And uh, with Sylvanas, you can possibly kill something and steal something else. But then there is this Acolyte, which, which is annoying. Amaz will be getting armor. That's actually pretty funny. So how do you deal with this Dr. Boom here as Amaz? Or do you just even maybe go for a Dr. Boom for your own? Um, it's not like you can go for face really, because um, you do have to deal with Dr. Boom. You you would love to have a fireball. Maybe you can go for technician and try to get a spare part, like a freeze. It's just gonna go for his own Dr. Boom and go all face. Wow. Okay, that's um, that's bold, and uh, that's that's probably a good decision as well because right now um, you force your opponent to trade with your stuff. There is no way that warrior is going to buff. Uh, well, there is no savager for warrior, no bloodlust. Yeah. So you, you know that um, warrior is not going to kill you with uh, with burst. So instead of uh, choosing to have like weird trades and ending up with no minions or like a weird um, situation. You do force your opponent to to make the tough calls. Absolutely. It's uh it's one of those things, isn't it, that you, you do play this kind of game of chicken a lot of the times when you play these mirror minions. It's okay, well, you know, you played yours and I played mine. Are you gonna trade now? Because if you don't and then if you don't trade, am I gonna trade? And how how much back and forth do you do? And Dale can't afford too much back and forth with his life total. So he is going to play Sylvanas and try to maybe steal Boom with that, but the, no, it's not possible. Um, well, it is possible if one of the bombs actually hits Sylvanas before, then he can Taskmaster Sylvanas. But other than that... Oh, bomb train, bomb train incoming. Oh, I didn't quite have the fourth one. That's a shame. Right, he's going to kill the Shredder. Yeah, Let's see what comes off it. Okay, it's just a 2-2. Two -two. He almost denied the mechs. But so there is still one more mech on the board. And um, for Amaz, it's looking good. It's not like the Sylvanas is going to die to anything on board right now. But then again, Warrior got back to 22. And also, Sylvanas is making um, it difficult for Amaz because if there is a brawl coming, then you can't really overextend. Oh, he picks up a freeze that's actually huge. And with that, he probably just has to go for face with the rest. Or maybe like trade with a 2 2. It's very difficult to see how Dale can get back into this here with this damage. Well, we know that Dale doesn't have the. The brawl, so um, he is in a tough spot, but then Amaz is playing around brawl anyway. Um, overextending with a sludge belt, um, pilot. I keep calling Pilot and Shredder sludge belcher. I don't know why. <laughs> well, it's a, makes... it's a minion that spawns another minion when it dies, it's a similar concept. Yeah, kind of. Maybe I was just calling the sludge belcher that just got top decked. Mm. You're just confused. You're looking at too many things at once. The board is frozen. So is there any way for what Dale no. not to die in two turns? Uh, there is no brawl. He can develop the Sludge Belcher. He can kill the bomb. No way to kill his own Sylvanas. Nope. That's a shame. One damage. He's probably happy about that. Armor up. Sylvanas will be annoying for Amaz next turn because there is no freeze, but maybe he, he, he will get another spare part there. Yeah, he's got an opportunity to draw another couple of cards here, Amaz. 
I might go for the Azure Drake first in case you manage to top deck a Fireball, because that'd be pretty crucial to deal with the Sludge Belcher. Yeah. And there oh, you yeah, go. Top deck fireball. fireball. Called it. Wait. See, that's it's the next good. that's the next level casting. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good. I called the Sludge Belcher, you called it Fireball. We see the future. Uh, but you still go for the freeze or stat swap. Plus one attack is not the card he needed. But the thing is like, all right, actually Dale can kill his own Sylvanas. Um, for a moment there, I thought like there is no way, but he can play Death Spite and um, Firework. So right now for Amaz, it's, uh, okay, he, has yeah. do, he has to do something to deal damage. I think you just go for the base with the last yeah. card. So. And freeze it once again. And fill your board as well. And I guess the Clockwork Gnome, that's an extra weak target. So, yeah, do you do you go for the Fire War X, uh break it death spite here? I think you do. Um, but what's the what's the order? Uh, you can go, wait, you can't really attack with it. So if you, you just space six, what happens? Um, so I think, you, have... I think you kill probably the 4-1 with Sylvanas. Yeah, you kill the 4-1. And then you kill either the armor smith or the two one. Uh, yeah, so you you'd kill off. I think you kill the Azure Drake. Yeah, and, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. You kill the Azure Drake because you kill all the one health minions with the whirlwind effect. So you, you kill can actually, Azure. Can actually execute. He doesn't need to burn the weapons, but I personally would because the weapons are just such dead cards. Well, you can't execute your own Savannas. Artosis, you can't execute your own Savannas. I just did an Artosis. That's wonderful. That's yes. another thing that will die to the Whirlwind. That's actually that's a pretty good pickup. Um, yeah, and I execute the Warlord Metal. That's actually pretty sweet. He has like 100% steel here. Yeah, he's gonna have, like yeah, have a chance of. Either way, it's gonna be. A f yeah, that's what he's gonna do. Pretty good read by Dale, seeing that play. Wow, that's actually a fantastic board here. Uh, well, the, one of the four fours. So much to armor, though, Jesus. Hamas is up at 13 armor. And there's another freeze. Double four. Wait, is that it? How yeah, much damage is this? This that's is 14. 14 plus 4 is 18. Plus, oh, he's one off. No, in fact, he, he isn't. Oh, no, yeah, he is. <laughs> he's, he's one that's off. So close. Yeah, double fireball. Attack face, and then either ping or put on the whirling blades. Either way, and personally, I would just go for it and freeze the four three. If the last, if the last card is like Straza, um... <laughs> if the last card is like Straza, then the chips fall where they may, I guess. I think you want to you want to develop the minions. So you ping it to one, you go for face, you uh, you develop Snow Chugger, and uh, you buff the Azure Drake plus one and go um, five damage to face. And that's pretty safe. And then next turn, uh, assuming that Azure Drake died, let's say Azure Drake dies to... He's gonna go for the one fireball. Uh, that's, that's fine. There is only one card in your opponent's oh, hand. And... So he's that's it. That's lethal. Is it? Yeah, because he, he will did, armor up. He can armor up, but then he and has and kill. Um, not actually, not kill anything. Uh, if he plays Belcher and ar armors up, it's not lethal. But if he attacks, uh, if he kills one of the minions and assumes there is no other fireball, it's really tough. It's a really tough call. Like your opponent just fireballed your face. Do you assume that the second card, the last card, is fireball as well? I think you do. I think you you know you see the pair of cards he's been holding on to, and you just kind of assume it. So now the decision: death or life. Attack into one of those those minions, or not. I wonder. What is he going to do? A mask with a poker face. Not really concerned. Oh my god, such a sick read. He actually assumes a fireball. Namaz gets Antonidas. Oh man, Antonidas is such a sick pickup. I wonder. 
So right now, Amaz is facing the Sludge Belcher, and um, you can actually think about... Wow, this is a tough call. I think he just... Uh, you can Fireball Sludge Belcher and then kill the, the Sludge attack face with Azur Drake. What to do? And uh, he's actually going for it. Uh, an alternative is just um, killing the Belcher and playing Antonidas and MC, but... Uh, Hmm. Yeah, this is definitely tough. Time runs out on me. It's not like Amaz is in trouble, he has 30, 30 life and 10 points of armor. Dale picks, uh, picks up his... Um, Shield slam. Oh, but there is. I guess you do develop the Ragnaros and armor up. That's it. Like, there are no other plays. Alright, so this Ragnaros is getting getting played and armor up from Dale. He's probably thinking if he should attack into this um, this mech. And that's a correct call because there is a blast mage coming. That might have been lethal. So now Ragnaros is starting to do some damage. Ama still no spells. Wow, that read. <laughs> Dale's the master of reading mage from my perspective. And right now he needs a shield block. He gets oh my god, he gets a shield maiden! That's so sick. He's I can take the hit. Apparently Dale is actually coming back from this. He was able to develop this Ragnaros. He was able to clear Antonidas with the Shield Maiden. And Amaz is in trouble with uh, with just top decks, but how is he going to deal 11 points of damage where his Dr. Boom is gone, his Antonidas is gone. Dale is actually in a good position to, to finish this game and take the lead with 1-0 uh, versus Amaz. Uh, right now, Amaz is in a very uh, tough spot. He is really agonizing about it. He knows there's probably no way he is going to win, but because he's seen some question, well, not say questionable cards, like cards like Slam, he wants to see what this war is going to play. This is his last turn, last top deck. Mad Scientist is not going to cut it. Amaz is going to concede this game. Dale's taking game number one versus Amaz, eliminating Mech Mage, which is a which is a contender. It's a tough mate, tough deck to play. Sorry about that, Dimsh. I uh, don't know what happened. My internet went... Okay, so we, uh, I said see how it's going to end. We'll see how this match is going to shake out. We did see a Kazan Mystic in the Druid of Amaz. That's not going to be an important card in this game, but uh, it's actually, it could be an important game if Dale gets down to his... Uh, important card if Dale goes on to his Hunter. That's probably why Amaz was thinking about this, ma um, this match. If the Druid is fine-tuned to counter other classes, but still, even, even with Kazan Mystic being not really a dead card, but a card that's not that relevant in this matchup, it, it's Druid is still doing the same thing, which is playing minions, attacking, what and then winning now? with the combo. And um, right now, what do we know? Is this the taunt or is it the, the combo? This, pro this is probably the combo because um, we, we see the force and uh, taunt doesn't play a single copy of Force Nature. 
yeah, I think it's yeah, it's got to be the the faster druid. We see the the shade of Nakramas as well, kind of gives us an indication of that. And innovating out the shade on turn one always feels good. It, it's even better if you've got the wild growth to uh, follow it up, but it's okay, I guess, by itself. All right, now even though he has the shade, his curve doesn't look that well. He needs to top deck something. Uh, druid of Claw is not a card he wanted. He still doesn't have a turn three and turn four play. Uh, from turn 5 he's going to have a couple of good plays, but for now it's just he's uh, too slow, so he needs to decide if he wants to attack into this Acolyte, he decides not to. Um, for Dale, I think his hand is uh, alright. He has um, he has this Acolyte, he can use Taskmaster to get a couple, like to get a draw and to start attacking. And this is exactly what Alchemix was doing uh, before, just uh, develop those small minions early and uh, try to get an advantage, try to get an edge, um, abusing the fact that the mouse doesn't have a play. Wow. <laughs> that's a great play. Uh, in, in the words of Amaz himself, that's a card. Yeah, that's that's definitely a card. That's uh, probably the best 4-drop you can play against Warrior, um, especially because of brawls and other stuff. It's, uh, it's pretty good. Fiery War Axe, though, for Dale, is a... Uh... You know, it's good that at least he has that that answer. And he's going to be able to trade off for the three two that comes off as well. Does have shield maidens. He's going to be able. He's going to want to get them out turn six because he's, you know, starting to get a little bit low on health. You know, you've got to watch your health against the, the druid. Just from the beginning of the game, you've got to be aware of your life total. And warriors have got to get that that armor off. By the way, I must go the priest card from um, Pilot of Shredder. I'm not even surprised. <laughs> That's true. How many are there? Any others? Priest cards? I think it's just that one, right? Yeah, priest is having two drops, so that's one of the prom most prominent two drops for priests. And uh, the chance of a mass getting a priest card was actually pretty low. It was, pre it was actually pretty contrary. high. Let's, <laughs> let's be let's be honest, Nim. The chances of him getting a priest card were pretty high. Agreed. So what do you do here? Azur Drake is. Um, it's a nice card to get. Um, playing Azur Jake instead of Druid of the Claw is fine because you do um, get a card to increase the quality of your hand. And Azur Jake is not easily killable here uh, with the two free attack um, sources. Yeah, this is. Uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty difficult. Let's see where this is going to go in turn five. We're going to see a second acolyte by the looks of it. Uh, because he probably wants to Whirlwind, so with Acolyte you can um, trade with uh, Azure Drake and then Whirlwind, but then you can just uh, attack the Drake first and see what you get. Like, draw a card first from... Oh wait, actually he can draw more cards before then. Like, you just Whirlwind first, draw two cards, and then trade. Yeah, that's pretty smart, I like it. That's that's a pretty good play, and he's gonna, as you say, draw those cards, gets the... Uh... Defender of Argus, that's interesting. Yeah, so Dale is playing in a way so that he still has the one. Oh, Amaz mostly missed turn free, but Dale has um, has the minions. He got a lot of cards, so the quality of his plays uh, will be very high starting from the next turn with Shield Maidens. Um, you know, if you like play, shield on, let's say turn seven, Shield Maiden into Shield Slam. That's a, one of the best <laughs> counters in the game against uh, Ancient of Lore, for example. Yeah, absolutely. Maz is looking... He doesn't have any hmm. great mana-efficient turns. He could he could deal with this, uh, this Acolyte. He could develop a Druid of the Claw. I think you just the develop Druid of the Claw as it sounds and uh, attack with the um, Shade. Um, he can make him overdraw, for one, if he wants to. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if that's actually doing anything. <laughs> you might, you, well, you can possibly try. Amaz just loves making people overdraw, so I... Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fair point, and uh, if you if you actually burn Grom, that would be pretty huge. Well, that uh, happened he to have yesterday. To There's the shield slam. Oh, that's perfect. So I guess you do Shield Maiden turn 6, and then next turn, second Shield Maiden, Shield Slam. Yeah, exactly for the for the turn 7. Um, but this shade is getting bigger and bigger, and uh, also Amaz is keeping the bro uh, the board cleared. So that's a pretty smart player on Brawl. 
That shade is just absolutely massive at this point. How much damage is there? Let's say uh, in three turns, seven, eight, nine. In three turns, the shade will have 10 attack. So the combo <laughs> is 26. I wonder. So this is something Dale has to think about. On turn nine, he has to have more than 26 it, it, health. Yeah. That's or insane. Not. Well, we'll see if it, we'll see if the shade does manage to get any huge attacks off. That would be that would be pretty crazy. But he's, he does have to choose here. This feels like a pretty obvious shield maiden to me, but Dale's thinking about the Sylvanas. No I like Sylvanas as well. Uh, if there is no silence and you've just uh, seen Keeper, so you don't expect silence, you give yourself a chance to steal the shade. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Actually, this you know this could well be a better play with this with the the two shield slams shield maidens in hand. That if the ancient lore comes down, you trade for the you trade the Sylvanas. You know you you kill the two four with the Sylvanas, and then you play shield maiden shield slam your own Sylvanas, and then steal either a five five or an eight seven shade. You can also just uh, shield slam the two four and trade your Sylvanas to five five and steal the shade. So there is a couple of options, and uh, and all the options are good. Like whatever happens, uh, if there is no silence from Amaz, and like being Dale and thinking if if he doesn't have a second silence, I, I'm basically good. So a very it's tricky turn for Amaz. He's gonna wrath here. Wow, that's like a next Where level play. He wrathed his own shade. For I like it, that's ballsy. <laughs> okay, and well, there's the brawl. Wow. Well, to be honest, it means that Amaz will have... With Innervate, Amaz has how much mana next turn? 10. And um, he is getting his opponent really low. Even though... Right now this board is really tricky. Like, how do you... Steal the shade, kill everything? Can you do that? Can you steal the shade and do it and kill everything? Uh, I think you question. can with slam. If you slam the two four, attack it with a weapon, then armor up, attack with Sylvanas into the four four. Hat. Yeah, and then use. Is there a Taskmaster? Yeah, there is a Taskmaster. Okay. So that's let's four do that. That sounds good. <laughs> six. Yeah, that's that's pretty much the turn you can do, and you still save the shield slam for uh, ancient of lore or anything that is F five five, and it's not Lothab. What now? But the the question is, but that's a lot of support. The question is, do you really do it? Is it like, yeah, you can also just brawl. And if Amaz top decks a savage roar, if you don't put the defender of Argus, this is lethal anyway. Oh man, the worst, uh, the worst option. Oh, that's unfortunate. I guess he maybe didn't want to commit as many card resources to a move in Sylvanas like that, but... It's difficult. Bro was definitely easier, and there was a good chance to get a cat um, that has um, charge so you can attack with it, or just getting that a massive shade. Here, Amaz just pushing the advantage, and that's why also Druid is so good versus Warrior. Uh, we're already at nine, and force of nature in the mouse's hand. He also has the draw potential. Like, if if the board is getting cleared somehow, even though after Lotha it will be troublesome, he still has initial floor just in case. Yeah, this is looking pretty good for Amaz here on the Druid, and the Druid just has crazy burst potential. You know, <laughs> like I say, Savage Roar comes off the top, and this game is over. So it's deal is only ever one card away. This is, Isn't uh, this game just over right now? Not, no, um, no, I think not really, actually. Um, or is it? What now? What, what's the way to kill this board? I'm trying to think. I'm not sure if there is a... Well, if he armors up and shield maidens, he goes up to 16. And then, yeah, then he's still dead because the hero power... Yeah. Yeah, so this is over. Even with Ragnaros hitting the 5-5. Five five, like he doesn't play Ragnaros at all. Nope. 
He's going for the def okay, the defender of our game, such. I like it, actually. and the, the game is not over with it. He was able to actually set up a board and taunts. And uh, this only proves like that Defender of Argus is, is in, an interesting choice and a card that can be used. Uh, looking at the standard options, we decided that the game is over because uh, Ragnaros didn't, didn't do it. Um, there was no way for the Shield Maiden to do it with armor up. But then Defender of Argus um, put him in a situation where he's still in the game and Amaz is actually getting lower and lower. Golden Chasm Mystic. And right now the Shield Maiden, well, the spells are back because Lotha is already played and um, Shield Maiden will be useful with Shield Block. And Warrior can actually escape it thanks to that. Wow, that's that's amazing. Um, we lost Callum for a moment, so I'll continue along, guys. Uh, in this situation, it seems like a repeat from the last game where uh, Amas played Mage versus Dale. Even though right now Amas has many more tools to win the game because he still has double combo or at least like um, double Savitur at one uh, force. And as mentioned before, he can draw cards. But Dale uh, barely surviving in a very tough spot with the Stefaner of Argus. And uh, this is one of the strengths um, of Warrior that he can come back from those tough situations and use the cards uh, in the end game to just um, pull himself, uh, himself over. Right now, what a game. Can he spot that? Can he? Because he didn't slam his own Acolyte before, but he is getting slam and Grum. He, he reads the slam and he spots that. He has lethal. And Dale is going to take a second game with his Warrior. We thought he is going to play Agro Dex, but he is playing this control matchup really well on the back of his Defender of Argus being non-standard card in, the, in this world list. What a game. Amaz getting really close again and getting defeated. Alright, so um, Priest versus Warrior and Amaz's Priest with Zombie Chow might be a Defrallo Priest actually. And if it, if it, if it is a Defrallo Priest that is a bit more aggressive, this is a pretty good opening with Zombie Chow into Coin Dark Cultist and um, Okanai as well. We don't uh, we don't see a Pyromancer, but this is a, a good opening, um, I'd say for sure. Sylvana is also an amazing card from us here. And for Dale, with armor, with armor stuff and uh, with armor smith and um, Sludge Belcher, no Akalai of Pain this time. So Amaz is going to have to 3-0 with his signature Priest if he wants to take this matchup. Um, and, uh, well, if there's anyone that can 3-0 with Priest, it is Amaz. Yeah, certainly. Sorry about that again, a little bit of connection issues, but should be back now. Coin Dark Cultist. Dark Cult is such a crucial part of the Priest early game. And these Dark Cultists can really get out of control, and you see Zombie Chai, you see Dark Cultist. This is uh, a really commanding start for Amaz. So right now for uh, for Dale, a tough spot kind of. Um, not really a turn free play. If you like, if you Taskmaster your armor smith, you won't be able to, to kill the um, the Dark Cultist. Getting Zombie Chow does not achieve that much, but still you do have a very good turn four play and uh, Pilot the Shredder and such culture. Amaz just continues doing the free stuff. Uh, he has Harrison Jones, which, which might be important in this matchup as well. Pilot Shredder coming out for Dale, which is a pretty good 4-drop. These two are going back and forward with the good draws. Light of the Naru was a, an MVP card for Amaz in his Priest matchups yesterday. The damn stand ready. I'm just thinking, like, how do you really play this matchup? Uh, what's important and what's not? Uh, with the priest, uh, Amask has a kind of like more aggressive version of the priest, so he should be able to um, just trade minions and create a board. If there is no brawl, this might be too much for the warrior to handle. 
So it's not a standard priest versus warrior where you just go to fatigue and um, no. try to fatigue each other out and priest wins because he heals and um, uses fault steals. I would say Amaz is not even playing fault steal in this priest deck. I would take that guess. All right, so Dale develop, de develops the Sludge Belcher, and um, this is stopping Amas for a moment, but he can use the Naru with um, Okanai. There's no point in using Harrison yet, I believe. Okanai with, um, hmm. with the heal is going to help him to clear the Belcher, and he will develop a 3-5. Hmm, Pyromancer. That's one of the signature cards for Amaz. Uh, he can also just kill the Belcher and then use Circle of Healing and maybe then play Alcani. Like, there's a lot of options. He can... I Definitely. Um, just uh, kill the Belcher, heal, or and, and play Alcani, or... You could also Okanai and Naru, but then getting your uh, your minions low, and uh, he can use Circle of Healing after playing Okanai. He decides to keep Circle of Healing in his hand. Well, with this uh, Pilot to Shredder, it is Pilot to Shredder is contesting the board a bit, but I definitely I'm not going to try questioning about his play as Priest. It's, it's really tough, and uh, again, having so many cards in hand. With Explosive Sheep, uh, that's a card you definitely don't want to see as a warrior, uh, especially if you can get a 4-3 or a 4-4. Being the house mana storm as Succubus. Explosive Sheep is kind of weird. So as a warrior, you got the... Wonder. Well, you have Acolyte of, Acolyte of Pain, so possibly Explosive Sheep might draw you some cards. But then if uh, if they would go for double Acolyte of Pain, being greedy and ambitious, Amas could have cleared with Okanai Circle. Right now Amas... Uh, because Warrior only has 4 cards, and whenever Warrior has 4 or 5 cards, I'm really happy about that. And that's an amazing turn six. Just uh, not playing anything, healing your uh, cultist, being super patient in this matchup. So for Dale, uh, you like what do you think? Uh, looking at um, Amaz not playing a card, turn six, heal your minion, pass. Dale has this defender of Argus, but then again, you probably want to get rid of the sheep. So maybe just attack with the sheep first. Unless you want to um, draw more cards. So then you attack with the sheep first. And um, play maybe Defender of Argus still. And attack... Um, like sheep attacks into minion. You draw cards. Then play Defender of Argus to build up the board. It's very difficult. He has the shield stump still. But do you really keep the sheep on board? So the rope is running, he's almost out of time, but he was able to clear this, uh, this cultist. And with double the uh, double dark um, Acolyte of Pain, so with double Acolyte of Pain, he is going to draw the cards he needs. So for Amaz in turn 7, he can clear this easily. Playing Sylvanas would be weird, just um, he can easily lose it to a weapon. Maybe Pyromancer and heal himself with the Naru, so that um, he gets um, a Light Warden, clears the the Acolytes. Or maybe he'll pass. That's exciting. 
Um, many times I've seen Amas playing this matchup. He was always going for a passive, a passive approach. And uh, if you go for a passive approach, you put your, your opponent in a very tricky situation. Like, look at Amas right now. He's super calm. He knows what he wants to do. And uh, he's going for it. Also, for, for Dale, there is no good way to... No good way to actually draw the cards from those acolytes right now. So he needs to decide if he wants to go uh, for some kind of damage. Maybe Defender of Argus this time uh, to no. deal more damage and um, make those uh, those acolytes a bit more tricky for a possible Pyromancer. I must Do you develop the board? Well, the good news for Dale is that he does have Alexstrasza and Grum. So he might be able to, to create a situation. Hmm. All right. So for Amaz right now, um, the situation on the board doesn't didn't change that much. Uh, he can still just uh, hero power pass. If he continues, if he continues passing, he's just collecting the cards uh, for for the key turns. So Dale is going for Alexstrasza and uh, going to deal a bit of damage, trying to prepare for the Grom finish. He got the Taskmaster, which is really important. He will be able to deal twelve at least from his hand alone, even if the board gets cleared. So now this is the turn for Amas to decide what to do and how to deal with, with this situation. An easy clear would be just um, Soul Priest, Okanai Soul Priest with Circle mm -hmm. of Healing, and then he can use Double Circle, but that's kind of like waste. He can still just use um, Naru and, uh, and the Hero Power. So Amaz has a lot of options and a lot of cards right now. He definitely needs to clear. But then again, he has to heal himself because he's exactly at 12. So if there is a second Taskmaster, he's just dead right there. Tough decision for Amaz. So if he heals himself, uh, he has to heal himself. Then he gets down 7 mana. How can I Soul Priest? Soul Priest, that's 3 left. Consider. Wow, is he just going for Okanai? Maybe, maybe he can also double circle and then heal himself. Get back to like 17. Will he actually manage to finish all the things? Because of the rope. Amaz, no, you're getting roped! All the actions. So Amaz goes back to 15, 17. Wow. All right. Pretty close there with the rope, but uh, apparently you can queue the actions and the game will still execute them. So now Dale uh, in a weird spot. Uh, he knows the double circle Okanai clear is out. It's gone. And Amaz is down to five cards. <laughs> you probably don't suspect that there is any way uh, for Amaz as a priest to kill him out of 43 points of health. So now Amaz just need to needs to decide how to clear uh, the boom and if if there is a way. Um, there obviously is a way, like, he can attack into Boom with both minions and use uh, Holy Nova, and um, there is, any like, a lot of other options here. Yeah. Alright, uh, we, we have some technical issues, uh, guys, that's why I'm still casting for now, but, um... Well, this game, guys, what is happening here?
So Amazu was able to clear the board. And he still has like a big pyro monster. He's going to start dealing some damage. Uh, Dale probably not happy about the situation right now. He does have a weapon though, so maybe Shield Maiden, um, Death Spite. With Death Spite, he gets a mass to 15, and then next turn, if a mass goes to 17. He will have 16, so still not it, still not it. Amaz escaping the lethal range really exceptionally. Sure, welcome. Hey guys. What now? Can you introduce yourself? Yeah, hey guys, so I'm Jeff. I'm actually the creator of Harstaff, since uh, Callum is here. I'm gonna step in for now. All right, all right. So, can you tell us more about hard stuff? <laughs> sure. It's, no, it's just the tool people use to keep track of their game and stuff like that to know how they can get better. So, like, obviously Dale uses it. That's how he's uh, beating Moss two zero right now. Oh right. yeah, he's definitely playing well with the warrior and uh, the help of hard stuff. Well, right now, Dale is in a situation where he is a bit off, like, even if he gets the wrong custom with an attack. Well, after Harry's third play, so Amaz really well, this, um, like, disabling the strategy that Dale is uh, applying here and keeping out of the lethal range. Do you think this will go to a fatigue war anyway? Um, I don't think so. Because awesome. Dale is many cards ahead. I think Amaz is actually in a situation where he will be able to propel the board and just keep giving out. Um, it's nine turns. The, can this game last nine turns? Dale is getting over and over. Possibly. So I feel like Dale still has a lot of board clears and like. Silence to take care of Savannah and Sledge Gosh and such. What now? Yeah, actually, uh, looking at the hand of Dale, I think Dale has ways to, to deal with everything that Amaz is going to play. Also, Amaz yeah. doesn't have that many cards, so that's a very valid point. Is injured? Oh, even well, with North Shark Cleric. Yeah, that's changing that's stuff. Uh, stuff a bit. And Power Shield, okay. <laughs> Oh, and he steals. actually runs a fault steal. Is he going to get Ragnarok? Oh, the execute. Well, execute will definitely be useful here. Yeah, definitely for the girl mash, right? Wow. Okay, so for Dale, uh, he still has this Grimash that can yield 12 points of damage, and he has a weapon. So if he feels ambitious, can actually go with the weapon and back face. Okay. Yeah. Then you really probably want to use Taskmaster on this Harrison Jones. And you know that um, this Death Spite will be an activator for Gromash anyway, but then you will be short on lethal because Amaz. Yeah, Amaz also got two Sledge Brothers in hand. So. Pretty good for now. Yeah, Amaz is safe for now. And um, as long as Dale is uh, threatened by this board and uses cards to, to deal with it, then Amaz will be in a good shape with all the endgame potential. Because even even though Grom uh, is an endgame card, he is a finisher. It's not like you play Grom and then you win the board because you played Grom, like Sneeds or or mm. It's like a silver bullet. So yeah, it seems like he's doing exactly what he said. This, well, this proves that Dale knows what's uh, what's going on uh, because like some of the people can be really ambitious and, and try to keep Taskmaster for one burst attack and ignore the possibility of a sludge belcher or, or a bigger bigger heal. 
Uh, so Dale definitely knows how to play this matchup. And uh, unfortunately, this matchup is going to last. Like this, this specific match is going to last and uh, exhaust both players. So we might actually see the fatigue match. So in that case, I guess if Dale actually knew they're going to fatigue, he shouldn't have killed the North Arch cleric. Should probably left that on board and true and try to oh. try to amass to, like to force a mass to draw more cards. Yeah, that'd be interesting if he made that read. But at this point, it's really hard to say because you still hope that you can win with minions, and you do you really expect those sludge belchers from the priest and the priest winning the board? And you do have the brawl, so. Yes, that's true. So what do you do here? Do you uh, just clear the sledge belcher? I think you can actually um, attack sledge belcher and whirlwind. You want to get rid of this uh, light warden because it can deal a lot of damage if left alone. Zombie chow, it doesn't matter that much. And if uh, mouse gets a sludge um, token, like one, two, it doesn't matter as well. But then you don't have any other plays. Like just playing. Hmm. You can consider using silence in the villager. Does he drop the Girl Masher? I guess not. No, I think it's hard too early. But on the other hand, he used most of the activators. That's the situation sometimes yeah. where where um, that's a trap like for warrior players. You do use double Death Spite, you do use double Taskmaster, and then you use your whirlwind. Is someone injured? So Ma's going to drop the cleric and drag hard. Another sauce deal. Wow. Um that might be key. Getting another belt wow. shield slam. Oh, shield slam is a dead card for now. Mm -hmm. And probably will. The belcher is definitely very annoying for Dale to deal with. Yeah, especially where Warrior is running out of cards. How many cards Warrior has still in the deck? Around five? Six. Six car. So Warrior is getting out of uh, out of the tools. What now? And Amaz is getting high, uh, higher on health, and um, we've seen Alex Traza already, haven't we? I'm actually. This game is going for so long, I'm actually confusing the cards right now. Like I don't Strata. think we saw Alexra. I think we saw Alexstrasza, actually, yeah. Uh, no, I'm not sure. Hmm. What's Dr. Pool? Dr. Pool was on. I'm not sure. But still, Wary has a limited amount of cards to, to, to limit the priest's, uh, priest's health, health pool. And then to to win with Gromash uh, being activated, and right now the activator that uh, Dale has is the Shield Slam, but then there is a token. So this turn is definitely not exciting at all with Hero Power Pass uh, being a correct play. But still, like you don't want to Hero Power Pass with ten mana. Yeah, it's not sure what else. Oh, Arcanine comes out for Amaz here. Oh, I think Amaz is definitely thinking about the fatigue play, since he's not healing himself now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Amaz has all the tools he, he needs. Dale's going to play, and then dismantle it. He is pretty safe at 22. It's not like Warrior is going to deal more than 12 damage in one turn out of the empty board. Also, Amaz doesn't want to create a board that's, um, that's good for the brawl. Mm -hmm. So it's a very smart and patient play from Amaz here. Yeah, certainly he, he really knows the matchup and knows how it goes. And he showed it like before, on turns 3, 4, 5, he was just uh, passing turns. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that all the Priest fans that really wanted to see Amaz bring, playing Priest are excited about this exciting match. <laughs> Oh, Shadow of Death, that's definitely going to be useful. Well, Yeah, it's a it's a good card. If there is a Ragnaros in the deck... Um, pretty sure there was, right? Yeah, 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 there is. Like, we've seen that before, so... Yeah. Yes, he already has everything. And he has no need on uh, to play any card. Just uh, healing yourself and using those three small minions to chip in the armor. 
So if you're Dale, what are you hoping to get here now? Your rag? Uh, you hope to get a rag, but then you know that rag is going to die. So you hope to get a rag and then um, hit face. But more or less, you want to get minions. Uh, you've played Sylvana. I'm not sure if you played Sylvanas already, but you you do want to play something that you can buff with Defender of Argus and um, deal with the board without casting Brawl. But I'm not sure if he has any specific cards to put him. Like I've, he might be thinking like, what else do I have in my deck? Like, how do I still win the game? Uh, he's seen double circle of healing though with Okanai, so he can go for a possible silence defender of Argus to de de deploy some kind of board. But it's definitely looking good for Amas for now, especially after Doctor Boom being picked up. Hmm. All right, so Amaz is thinking about the play right now. Um, he does have the Sludge Belcher to kill, which shouldn't be a problem, but it's just about um, using Igor cards well. Uh, dealing five damage with Zombie Chow, which is kind of interesting. Uh, Zombie Chow dealing a lot of damage before, as just said, to attack minion, and then turning into a lethal weapon, kind of, with Falcon Soul Priest. Oh, he doesn't even have to kill the 1-1. One, one. The Ragnaros finally comes. Fire Lord. So I guess here you just drop the rag and... Hmm. Oh, no, they can hear you. I'm thinking like, is there maybe... Maybe Silence and Defender of Argus as well is the play. Like you develop two minions. You silence the 3-5 to limit the amount of damage you're taking and to make it like just a 3-5 blank kind of. Um, you defend Vargas to kill the, um, the cleric, but on the other hand, do you really want to kill the cleric because of the heals? Yeah, I'm thinking. I wonder. If you go for Ragnaros, uh, you have two weird targets. You're probably fine with killing the free five, but you definitely want to, to hit face. Yeah. I guess if the rag hits face, you just kind of go aggressive. Uh. Oh, he hits the one too. Well, bye bye, rag. Double shadow or death. If you if if you have you if you will have like a faceless manipulator and uh, eleven mana, you could go for a BM faceless rag and then double shadow or death. <laughs> That'd be funny. I guess Amaz did he play a mind control yet? Um, nope, and we haven't seen it, and it's possible that he doesn't play it at all. Huh. Because that's really interesting. In the previous round, he had a uh, mind control and helped him win several games. So I guess well, it's kind of like, you know, mess with Dale here, if he watches previous game. Yeah, it's, poss it's possible that he plays it again, or, or just modify the deck a bit. Um, mm -hmm. Removing your mind control after playing it before is also smart, because people still prep play around it. Like, there is still the fear of the mind control in the deck, even though it's not in it. But, um, it, mind control is definitely a strong card in this metagame. Well, for Dale, I think you can possibly... Normally, you could concede, but seeing this priest, you probably want to see a, a bit more card, uh, a couple more cards. If you see Dr. Boom, that's a... a uh, valuable information. It seems like there are no options. You just armor up and play weapon and, and pass. Like you don't attack Vulture because yeah, this is a small, uh, slow agony. Vulgin. Ooh, it's a bit too late though. Yeah, but the mouse has all the tools to win the game. No point in overextending. Well, one plus seems one. like the game is gonna go to Mars. To just uh, silence and just silence Not the vulture, else. go for face, and uh, play defender of Argus, armor up. You could have done that last turn, I, I guess. What now? Oh, you don't have the cards, so you have to do something. Unless you will just want to stall and uh, see more cards from from your opponent. 
But Amaz was patient like the whole game, so there is no reason to think that he's going to make a misplay now and maybe show, uh, give you any information. What I think this is also a very important match for Amaz because not only he's not getting eliminated from the tournament, Amaz is in his comfort zone as a priest playing this matchup. And for Dale, I can only imagine how agonizing it is to try to match against this priest being behind. Sure, but I'm sure Dale is very uh, satisfied with his play so far. Oh, Going yeah. 2 0 gets him on. But then entering the next back. game, entering the next game, uh, they will be after a very tough loss, and um, this might cancel the. For sure, for sure. So Maz looks like he's very comfortable. You can see from his webcam there. Just... Yeah, here's like no chance that Maz is going to die. So. I guess you just clear and uh, hit face and pat. Possibly. You have you have two extra vultures. Um, maybe you can develop some of the bigger minions. Yeah, so it doesn't matter that much now. Yeah. You could drop Doctor Boom. Possibly. Just get the brawl out of the way and then play those vultures. Or maybe just hero power pass. Is Amaz going to play a card? Please vote from the chat. Cards. Sylvanas is the last card for Dale. I guess we're going to see a concede here soon. I'm still going to try to. He's trying, but he knows that this situation is dire. Like, even activating Rome with his shit is not going to drop the sun. And mind control is the last card. There it is. Wow. You are on point. Okay, so do you just mind control Sylvanas? I think it makes sense. Amaz is probably also thinking, like, why is my opponent not conceding? <laughs> but still, definitely um, a good play from both players. And um, they're really resistant to, to the pressure mm -hmm. here, even though the game looked uh, pretty tough. And uh, I will have to tell you, like, those games where you just wait and wait are the most exhausting games ever because you have to think still after um ab about like all the up weighted chances and just hang on and see what, what's happening like if amaz shows mind control that's an information that dale gets and um that's a very valuable information that he got because he was patient he didn't concede but amaz is probably thinking about trying not to show it i have no time for games Alright, so Amaz is going to Shadow or Death his own Sylvanas to steal Sylvanas and uh, go, go for face. Uh, concealing mind control makes a lot of sense for the future games. So now, Dale, are you going to be patient and, uh, and still try to do something? There's no way to win this game, but maybe a brawl right now will give you some more information from your opponent. Your magic Silence brawl. Alright, we're going to see a brawl, guys. Is this spellbreaker going to survive this? And the soul priest is the last card standing. Can't say it's an unlucky brawl. I think the, it's alright. It might be a bit lucky for, for us. So we are going to see some fatigue damage here, but uh, Amaz knows that brawl is out of the way, so he can overextend easily. Never expect the second brawl. 
Somebody is going to surprise us with a second brawl at some point, and everybody will be like, oh my god, he's going to win the game because of the second brawl. Well, there is lethal next turn, so no point in stalling anymore. Uh, mind control still hidden. And Amaz is going to stay in the game. Um, Dale still leading 2-1 to one versus Amaz. Uh, Amaz down to his priest and uh, has to continue as a priest. Dale still with the um, druid, I believe, and a priest of his own, if I remember correctly. Um, that's a, a very interesting match. So, oh, and it's actually paladin and a warrior. <laughs> All right, my, my memory is getting fuzzy. So warrior is done, uh, done and um, hunter and paladin is still left for Dale. Paladin is an awkward match and a very difficult one versus priest and hunter. Yeah, that's an interesting list. So it's um it's possibly a, a mid range hunter, uh, a bit with a, a bit of a custom touch, which is uh, that's good. Okay. So a very strong start from, from Dale with Knife Juggler. Um, I, I really like starting with Knife Juggler as my first card because if there is no answer, you just deal four points of damage with attack. And uh, you haven't, like, Dale haven't seen any um, Holy Lights. And, um, well, Pyromancer is not something that clears this board yet. So a, a good start for the Hunter versus Amaz that actually has cards. Uh, he has uh, Dark Cultist. And uh, he will be able to develop some kind of board to fight the, the minions. But then again, Dale has um, Hunter's Mark, and he has the, the Cult Master. Well, oh, actually, this is amazing. Um, dealing with Dark Cultist, getting two minions, uh, even more minions with Web Spinner, and then. Cult Master next turn to draw the cards and replenish your hand. Wow, if the mouse doesn't get wild wow. pyromancer, it will be tough. Alright, here it is. Nope. Nope. He just gotta go and chosen the light warden here. Yeah, that's a free six, but then you can hmm, interesting. You probably use skill command on it, actually. Uh Kill command and treating the web center? Yeah, because you can get a beast um, and, and, mm -hmm. and play it the same turn. You can also play the cool monster and actually trade it for cards, but <laughs> I don't think that's the optimal play. Unless you're playing, well, you already use 100 mark, so the chance of getting a second one, if he even plays it, is uh, pretty low. But Mods is doing a good job already, delaying the Hunter so much. Oh, so he is going to go with the Hunter's Mark, I mean, Kill Command? Yeah. Amaz is definitely doing a good job here, because he did heal and uh, develop a minion that soaked 6 points of damage. So basically tanked 6 Quickly. points of damage, but then still, Amaz is getting lower and lower. He's going to develop, oh, a second Belcher. Like, oh, double Belcher, that's going to be good. Definitely a good defense. But right now we are we might see this cult master being played and um their wolf alpha from Westminster is also a great card that will help to deal with the um, with the belcher. Or is it? Um if he goes for cult master he's just going to draw cards and uh trade with this this belcher anyway. He needs to hit it with a knife. And he hits it. Wow. Right now he has it. Oh wow. Three cards and clearing the Belcher and still having six points of damage on the board. Full hand. He does have another Belcher right now. Yeah, but there is Ooh, a silence. A silence. Zombie Chow is uh, interesting, but there is a silence from, from Dale. Do you go for face with like, do you silence? Well, hmm, interesting. Unleash and silent? Yeah, I think you for that. Or if you if you use the dark and you are 
up. Yeah. That's probably better. Ten points of damage, and with Lepronome on the board, and unleash the hounds in your hand. Wow, this this might be the last game from us. And with three cards in hand that are reactive, like is, they are not even reactive; they are like blanks. Whatever he plays doesn't change the board state. He'll only need to so, trade. He's gonna need a holy nova here, or else it's over. Yes, that's the only card. Ooh. Can use with um, circle of healing. Is the game done now? I think it is. Like he is going to kill the cult master and the dog, and that's four, five. Six. Yeah, with unleash the hounds. That's it. That's over. Wait, a ten? No, he said ten. <laughs> There's the seven, eight, one off. Well, he can play Dr. Boom, so... So Dale being one damage off lethal. Give me some Bible Thumbs for Amaz, guys. And for Dale. I wonder. Hey, guys. I'm, I'm alive, I think. Oh, hello. <laughs> so what happened was I saw it was going to be a Priest Warrior match, and I just shut off my rooter. Um, I thought I'll just go for a little nap, and uh, looks like I've come back just in time. Uh, well, I think you just saw that priest versus warrior, and you disconnected on purpose because yeah. you didn't want to cast cast that particular match. We've seen a lot of uh, hero power pass, but here Amaz is in real trouble uh, right now. There was one damage of lethal from finishing the series. Amaz with wow. his back to the wall, not Absolutely. really having any options. This priest of Amaz is really going to have to do some big work here. Is there anything he can do to come back into this? Other than, I mean, I guess he's got to go for an Okanite circle here and hope that the heal. bombs don't kill him. Yeah, he has to heal himself, but then he's, uh, there is, wait, is there a way to kill uh, Dr. Boom? If he, hmm, how can I, how can I heal Dr. Boom, attack Boom with cultist and then circle? Can you, can you not heal your heal your own face first? Yeah. Then Ock and I oh, yeah, attack, attack, attack the cultist into the boom, and then, and then you uh, then you Ock and I start cult. And your Beltrus you can still die to the bombs. Because yeah, the bo if the bombs do five damage and go to face. Well, there's also the hero power. Oh. Wow, he actually survives that. Wow, that's insane. Amaz is the only How has survived? Yeah, the only person that could survive that was Amaz. But still, um, he is back in, uh, in the trouble business with double pilot and shredder. I have no time and shadow or death. Shadow or death and Savannah, but that is going to be it. It's going to be game number four going over to Dale. Dale's going to win this series 3 to 1 and knock out probably the biggest name left in this tournament, Amaz. Wow, what a performance from Dale. Yeah, that was definitely surprising. Amaz 